Hey guys, so in today's video we are going to be talking about hair because I would say about 75% of the comments on my videos almost are always, almost, that came out really weird, are almost always asking about my hair, whether it's product, how I did it, yada yada yada. Um, I do try to film hair tutorials, that's probably my most requested type of video. However, when I post it, it doesn't get that many views and then people will be like, how did you do your hair? And I'll always link it like down below to use as a reference, but I guess some people just overlook that. That's okay. So this is actually actually going to be my second time doing one of these videos. I have done one in the past, so I will go ahead and link that down below. So, okay, starting off with my hair. Obviously, this is not my natural color. I would say, naturally, I am a level four. Um, in the front area and on the crown, almost like all people, since that's like the most exposed to the sun, that tends to get lighter. In this area, it almost seems like I'm about like a five, between a five and a six. However, if you look underneath, that is definitely around a four. If you guys aren't familiar with like the scale, basically one would be jet black and 10 would be like platinum. So yeah, I would say I'm about a four. So like a medium to medium dark brown. Um, however, I was just over my dark hair. I don't know. I feel like as I've gotten older, I haven't tan, I don't tan as easily. So I wanted something that would just brighten my face up more. and. Um, going like this heavy blonde was definitely a huge change for me. I wasn't never this light until, you know, recently, but yeah, I'm kind of loving it and I just feel like it's perfect for spring and summer even though I did it in the winter. So this is, is actually a touch up. I did have it done originally about 11 weeks ago and then after 10 weeks I did get a root touch up with my highlights. I never go all the way up to the root. We'll go really close, but I don't like to paint it all the way to the top just because then I feel like when it grows out, you have a very stark line. So my best friend actually does my hair. We went to cosmetology school together. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys the formula we did for my hair because on Instagram and YouTube, I'm always getting questions about it. So what we did is basically, um, she, go, she just goes through and foils highlights. Some she just pulls in like weaves, like typical highlights. Um, we don't do any slices. We definitely always weave through. But then on some on some highlights, like especially around my face, what she'll do is hold up a piece after she weaves it and kind of just back comb it. That way, it almost has more of a softer blending effect. So rather than just being a straight line from like the dark to the light, it kind of like goes in like this. So it just blends better. It just looks more. I don't know, fluid, I guess. And then we also cut quite a bit of my hair off before my hair was past the boobage area. So I'd say about the base length, we probably took about two to three inches off and then we went in and gave my hair a ton of layers. My hair was just getting way too heavy. I had lots of long layers. So now, as you can see, I have lots of shorter layers in here to give me more oomph and volume. So before we get into kind of like my favorite styling products, and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what we used on my hair just to answer all 80 million questions. That might be exaggerating a bit. Okay, so first what we did is bumped my base. What that means is I just kind of lightened my root area just since it is so dark, it would be such a drastic jump from like that level five to this light blonde. So we went in with Rusk's permanent color line in a 6NW. This time we just did 10 volume, so it's more of a softer, medium brown rather than a light brown. And then for the bleach, Brooke used the Paul Mitchell lightener and we did, um, I think 20, maybe 10 and 20 volume. Obviously from the bottom, um, she started a little bit like on 10 volume and as we got to the top, we went up higher in volume just so it would process evenly. And then as my toner, we never go in with like an actual like normal toner. We always use Redken Shades. Redken Shades is a demi-permanent line, meaning it does eventually wash out. However, demi-permanents do seal the cuticle, so it just makes your hair look incredibly smooth and shiny. Even the way it feels after you get it done is amazing. So we didn't really leave any pieces completely untouched because that would just look too kind of white against my hair. So for the toning, we used um, Redken shades in, what is it, 9NB and GB. So we just went in with neutral and gold all through. That, that way there's a lot of dimension rather than just being like dark brown and then just one solid blonde all over. I just really didn't want that. I like the way this looks here and I like that we keep the dark underneath. That way when it's curled, you still kind of see some darker pieces. So yeah, that is the formula we use in my hair. So if any of you guys are curious, there you go. Obviously you would kind of customize it and adjust it to what your natural hair color is. So the shampoos that I've been using recently, I have one kind of salon version and then just something that you can get at the drugstore. 
So what I typically use is the Rusk Sensories Bright Shampoo. This is a chamomile and lavender brightening shampoo. So lots of people with either white hair or blonde hair, if your grandma has like stark white hair, then you probably have seen her use um, purple shampoo before. Basically what this does is kind of neutralizes any yellow tones you might get in it, whether it's brassiness or whatever, it just looks more how to explain it you'll kind of get like an ugly yellow color after so long so this just keeps it nice and fresh just like the first day you had it so yeah for any blondes out there if you have a really white hair I highly recommend purple shampoo another thing before we get into more into shampoo people always ask how I get volume in my hair I do not wash my hair every day I think that's the biggest thing I understand some people just have naturally greasy hair but the longer you go without washing your hair your scalp will almost like trick itself into thinking okay I'm producing too much oil so I need to slow down but if you go in every night and you're washing those natural oils out of your hair it's just gonna keep producing more and more so that's my biggest thing I know lots of people think it's gross but I really only wash my hair I would say about twice a week sometimes once a week in the summer I do twice a week in the winter I do once a week just because since it is so humid here so in between I just use dry shampoos you really don't need to be washing your hair every day and stripping it of its natural oils that's how your hair just tends to look drier and more lifeless so that's my biggest tip okay so if you're looking for a drugstore alternative I know um, what is that brand I cannot it is it John Frieda I know he has a purple shampoo at the drugstore you can find one at Sally's as well that's in the purple bottle I can't even think of the name right now that's gonna drive me crazy because that's all we use at school this one is just my favorite I prefer the smell of this and I just feel like it works really well so now if I'm just looking for a basic shampoo, one that I've been enjoying from the drugstore is the Garnier Fruit Teas Fortifying Damage Eraser. So I'll use this every now and then. Sometimes I'll even mix the two. Obviously, since my hair is processed, it kind of needs some extra like moisture and stuff in there. So, yeah. um, okay, now moving on to conditioners. So for just basic conditioners, once again, to go with that shampoo, this is the drugstore conditioner that I've currently been liking. It's probably not what I'm gonna use forever, but I just wanted to mention it just because I know, I'm always curious about what people have in their shower. So yeah, from the drugstore, this is what I've been using. However, the conditioner that I use more often is another purple product, just to keep the brassiness out of my hair. Especially since I have darker hair transitioning to blonde, I feel like your hair can definitely start to look brassy quicker. So I just really like to keep it nice and fresh looking. So the purple conditioner that I use is from Joyco, which is probably one of my favorite like salon lines. This is the Color Endure Violet Conditioner for toning blonde or gray hair. So this I just go in and I'll just do a tiny bit and I, do use this conditioner from, um, I'd say about mid-ear down. I never do conditioner all the way up at my roots. I feel like that is just way too heavy, and then even after you rinse it out, it can just really like pull everything down. So yeah, I really only like to go about ear level down, concentrating on the ends of my hair, since that tends to be the driest like on everyone. One other shampoo that I wanted to quickly mention, I actually don't have right here with me, I guess it's not one shampoo in general, but a kind of shampoo is a clarifying shampoo. Now since, like I mentioned earlier, I only wash my hair once a week, I'll get lots of buildup in my hair. Well, not a lot, but after a week or so, obviously you're gonna have more buildup than the typical person of just like dry shampoos and other products that I use. So I'd say maybe every like week and a half, I like to use a clarifying shampoo. Um, the one from Joyco K-Pax line is probably one of my favorites that I found. I know there's plenty at the drugstore, I just haven't really tried them out much. Um, since I have my cosmetology license, I can buy these products at cost, so I just prefer to use those. And I will say there is a big difference in salon hair care compared to what you find at the drugstore. I know before I ever did hair and stuff, I always thought, oh, it's the same thing. I'm not going to pay that just because of the name. But there definitely is a difference because whenever I run out of my salon products and I just stick to drugstore, after a week or two, I definitely notice a difference in my hair. So. I feel like hair care is definitely something you should splurge on every now and then or just maybe have like one really good conditioner or one really good shampoo that you rotate every so often. Not necessarily hairspray and all that, but shampoo, sorry, shampoo and conditioner I would highly recommend. Moving on, I have a deep conditioner I wanted to quickly mention. This one is from Aussie. It's the 3 Minute Miracle Moist. This stuff I believe is $2.99 at the drugstore. This is one product I feel like is definitely comparable to salon quality hair care. It just makes my hair feel really smooth and silky. Um, once again, this is a super heavy product, so I would never recommend going up higher than your ear. Otherwise, you're just going to weigh your hair down and have like really flat hair. However, if your hair is super over processed and dry and need of like 
some intense moisture, I would skip on this and you'd probably need like the Redken Extreme Fortifying Hair Mask. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I know it's from the Extreme line. It comes in a tub like this, but it's blue and it's the Redken Extreme. Um, if you see the packaging, you'll know which one it is. That stuff is a miracle worker. Whenever I first got my ombre done, like two years ago, my hair was in really, really bad condition and it just needed a ton of moisture. That stuff made my hair feel like hay and it like moved over to feeling like silk. So that is like definitely a product I would highly recommend. So on days that I do wash my hair, now don't get it twisted guys, I do shower daily. Obviously I wash my body daily, I just don't wash my hair daily. So on the days that I do wash my hair, after I shampoo and condition, I like to lightly towel dry my hair and then apply a leave-in conditioner. So the two that I am obsessed with are these two here. Obviously this one a little more than this. This is from the line Pravana. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if you can just purchase this at a store. However, if you have your cosmetology license or know someone that does or you go to a salon that uses Pravana, you should be able to purchase it there. It may be on Amazon, but Amazon is sometimes tricky unless you're buying it from the direct seller, so like directly from Pravana. This is the Intense Therapy Leave-In Treatment. This stuff is amazing. I can't say enough about it. Since my hair is dyed and stuff, it does get tangly underneath more than anything. This just like brushes everything right out and makes my hair super soft. So I like this one. However, another one that's more like readily available is the Healthy Sexy Hair Soy Tri Wheat Leave-In Conditioner. This stuff is really nice as well. However, I feel like I have to use a little bit more to make my hair really nice and like detangled I guess. So these are the two that I would recommend. The brush that I use once I get out of the shower, um, obviously you don't want to like brush your hair with a normal brush, but these are now out on the market and I am obsessed with it. This is called the wet brush. So basically it just has super super flexible bristles so it's not ripping your hair like a typical brush. Um, however, if you're still afraid to use a brush and your hair is really weak, then I would just go in with a wide tooth comb. But yeah, love this guy. I feel like I'm feeding you guys too much information, but I always get a ton of questions, so I just wanted to make sure that I answered everything. Okay, now when it comes to heat styling on my hair, I honestly never blow dry my hair. I think when I got my hair done, like, last week, that was the first time my hair was blow dried in like months. I just don't blow dry my hair. I typically shower at night and then I'll just wrap my hair up in a bun on the top of my head and go to sleep. So then the next morning, it'll still be a little bit damp, but I'll just let it air dry the rest of the way. I just, my hair naturally is very wavy. It used to be curly, but I just think since it's gotten longer and since there's just been lots of color going on in it, it's straightened out a bit, but it still just has like a kind of like uneven kinky wave to it. So whenever I blow dry it, it just goes out like a lion's mane. I have thick hair and then the texture of my hair is also coarse. So I just skip on blow drying. But if you guys do blow dry your hair, these are two products I would highly recommend, actually three. The first one is the Redken O2 Satin Wear, or Satin Wear O2, um, Ultimate Blow Dry Lotion. This almost just feels like a leave-in condi conditioner. It's just really nice and like it's almost like a serum, but it's white. You just put it through your hair and it instantly detangles, but it also just preps your hair for blow dry, so it's a heat protectant, and it just makes it really, really smooth. Now, if you're someone like me who has really thick and coarse hair, your hair probably takes forever to blow dry. That's basically why I don't blow dry my hair anymore, and since I curl my hair all the time, I just really like to just do one heat styling rather than two back to back, but this stuff cuts the blow drying time in half. I used to use this all the time when I worked in the salon, these are both from the Kenra Platinum line. One is the Blow Dry Serum. I prefer to use this on people with thicker hair. So it's just a concentrated thermal protectant. If you guys aren't familiar with Kenra, their entire line smells amazing. It's like Skittles and Starbucks had a, Starbucks? Skittles and Starbursts had a baby and it just smells amazing and fruity and sweet. Um, if you have thinner, finer hair, I would go with this one. This is the Blow Dry Spray. So it's just a little bit lighter on your hair and it doesn't make it as heavy, but it does the same thing. It's a thermal protectant and it just cuts the blow drying time in half. Both of these look like little bottles, however they last a long time because you really don't need too much. You just go in, spray an even layer through your hair, and then just hit it with a blow dryer. Now since I do curl my hair, I will apply some of this in at night, the blow dry serum, just with the um, leave-in conditioner that I used for the night. Okay, so now on days that I actually curl my hair, I still like to add some more heat protectant in there just because heat, besides like color, I would say, are probably the two things that just really damage your hair the most. I just can't go without it. My hair dried naturally is just not pretty and I just prefer having it styled. So before I go in with a curling iron, I always use this guy here. This is the KQC Thermal Shine. 
Um, this is from Flatiron Experts. That's only where I've ever really seen it. That's where I always go back and get it. This is probably like my third or fourth bottle of this stuff. If you guys are familiar with Chi Silk Infusion, it kind of has that same like masculine cologne scent, but I just really like it. It definitely makes my hair feel silky and smooth and I just feel like it does protect it. So yeah, I use this before I go in with my curling iron. Now moving on to the tool that I've been using the most lately. This is the Babyliss Pro. I believe this is a one and a half inch curling iron. I do still use curling wands all the time. However, now that I have these shorter layers, I just feel like this is easier for me. And lately I've just been liking this looser look. So this is now second day hair. I will curl my hair on the first day or what I, so I curled my hair yesterday. I'll probably wear it like this today. And then tomorrow I may touch up a couple of pieces, but I prefer the more relaxed, kind of loose, flowy look than a super like uniform curl. So this is the curling wand, curling wand, curling iron I use. What I like to do is over direct my hair. So what that means is rather than just holding a piece up and curling it straight down, I like to pull it this way just because I really feel like it adds volume in there. So yesterday it definitely had more volume. This is a little bit flatter than what I prefer, but whatevs, it works. So I will curl my hair and then on the crown section, just because I do kind of have a cowlick here that likes to split, I will go in with one of these large Velcro rollers and just wrap it around this while it's hot and then just take a duck bill clip, which this is another essential for me. On areas where my hair just doesn't do as well with holding a curl, I will use this guy and then, so I'll curl my hair, I'll clip it and then I'll just let it cool completely. I'll probably go in and do my makeup and then finish my hair afterwards. So yeah, these are an essential for me. You can find these super, super cheap at Sally's. So once my hair is cooled, I'll go in and release all the pins. Now, no matter how I curl my hair, this is pretty much what I do every time how I style it, whether it's a looser curl like this or a tighter curl, not necessarily a tighter curl, but something I use with a smaller curling wand, this is what I do. I'll flip my hair upside down and then I'll just go through and gently finger comb through it and then apply a hair oil. My go-to is from Agave. This is my second bottle. Obsessed with this stuff. This is just the Agave Healing Oil Oil Treatment. You can find this at Sephora, and I know they have a shampoo and conditioner now, so I really do want to try that. But yeah, this stuff is amazing. It just makes your hair smell good. It looks shiny and soft. So I'll go in, and I just feel like that just gives my hair a really nice kind of like bouncy, smoother look rather than just being... Not that it looks super dry after it's curled, but it doesn't look as like moisturized as what I would like it to. So I'll apply that. And then even on my first day, I will go in and apply dry shampoo. Dry shampoo is my best friend and it should be your best friend. It's like the best styling product on the market in my opinion. It's kind of like an all-in-one. So yeah, I hate fresh hair. Even second day hair, I don't like this. See what I mean? It's flat. Now tomorrow with added grit and stuff after the next couple days, I feel like my hair gets better and better as the days go on. So the dry shampoos I have here. The first one is the most affordable. This is probably my favorite one from the drugstore. This and then the Dove one as well. Unfortunately, I don't have that next to me right now. This is the Garnier Fructis Volume Extent, Extend Instant Botifier Dry Shampoo. So I'll just go in mainly on my crown area, kind of in my bangs, and just spritz them in there, and I don't brush it out right away. That's the big thing. I think lots of people who use dry shampoo that don't like it, it's because they don't use it correctly. They'll spray it in, and then they'll brush it out right away. What you need to do is spray it in and just leave it for a second, like on days that your hair is dirtier, so it can kind of soak up a little bit of that oil, and then you just rub it in and you'll get a really nice kind of gritty texture to where you can just manipulate your hair. The other two dry shampoos I love are both from the salon. The first one is the Kenra Color Care Platinum Dry Shampoo Refresh and Revive. This one, however, does leave a little bit of residue, so if you have dark hair, I would probably skip out on this one. I know a lot of people love Batiste. I've tried it a couple times, and it's just not not my favorite. Everyone's hair is different though, so if you haven't tried a dry shampoo yet, I'm not saying don't give that one a chance because I know a lot of people love it. I just haven't had the best luck with it. Another one, where did you go? I must have dropped it. That's fine. Basically, it looks exactly like this. However, I think it's called the Powder Refresh. It's from Redken. And the packaging of Redken has changed now. I think they're all like in different color bottles. Redken's dry shampoo is hands down my favorite. It's not scented. It doesn't leave a residue. It doesn't make your hair feel too sticky. It's just the perfect dry shampoo. 
So now if I'm wanting to add even more volume onto my hair, so this is probably what I will do by tomorrow. I will go in and add some kind of texturizing powder. This one here is my favorite. This is another great drugstore alternative. This is from Big Sexy Hair and it's called the Powder Play. It's a volumizing and texturizing powder. I used to own one from Aveda, but I definitely prefer this one over that one. So either of these will do the same thing. However, I feel like if you use a little bit too much of this, it's okay. But if you use too much of the got to be one, it's like your hair is sticky and done for so just be aware you have to be very very careful with these products what I'll do is go in and just section random pieces of my hair and dust it in sometimes I do that sometimes I'll go in and just do some on my hand rub it in and just kind of go in like this and it just gives some volume into my hair and just makes it big section, I know this video is gonna be so long is hairspray and finishing products um, my two favorite hairsprays, I prefer hairsprays that will hold but not make my hair feel crunchy. This one is probably my favorite. It's the Healthy Sexy Hair Soy Touchable Weightless Hairspray. I always spray my hair upside down, give it a good mist, and then when I flip my hair over, it's like instant volume. So this stuff like withstands the humidity, but it doesn't make my hair feel crunchy, so that's why I love it. Another awesome one is from Big Sexy Hair, and it's the Weatherproof. This is the Humidity Resistant Spray. I'm not sure if this is necessarily like a hairspray. If, you need, if you're someone who needs like firm, firm hold, this probably isn't gonna do the job for you, but if you're someone like me who just wears looser curls and you're just wanting to keep the frizzies out, this bad boy will do the job. Now the very final product that I must recommend is another Kenra product. This is the Kenra Silkening Mist. I found out about this in cosmetology school. In fact, it was Brooke, my now hairdresser, who recommended it to me and I am obsessed. Once again, Kenra smells like Skittles and Starburst had a baby. This just adds shine into your hair and it makes it feel really nice without looking greasy or oily. Plus I feel like it's kind of like a hair perfume. It just makes you smell amazing and I am obsessed. So yeah, that is pretty much everything you would need to know about my hair. People are always asking about products and the color, so hopefully this addressed all of it. I'm pretty sure it did because I feel like this was lengthy. But if I did miss anything, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you or you can always just tweet me at lollydolly128 on Twitter and I will answer that for you. But yeah, I think that pretty much covers this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have an awesome day and I will see you guys next time. Bye!